Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having a great weekend and you are warmer than me because here in the chicken and garden update, we've had our first frost of the season. It was very cold this morning. It is Wednesday when I'm recording this and we've got frosts forecast throughout the rest of the week. We even had some snow on Monday while we were filming and we were all very, very cold. Nevertheless, the garden is doing rather nicely. These are my broad beans, or rather fava beans, if you are in North America. They are doing amazingly well. Despite the cold, they are enjoying it. They're a very hardy bean and they take a while to grow. And actually, some people say that frost can actually help them. So I'm interested to see what happens there. All of my other kind of winter vegetables are still coming up. I do need to go over and just thin them out a bit. Obviously, I planted them before we got some heavy, heavy rain for about two weeks. And I haven't got around to going in there and basically thinning everything out. So... That is something that I do need to do. I did want to give you a bit of an update on my strawberries and everything else. Now, if you remember, I did actually transplant these strawberries earlier this year, but I'm hopeful, although some of them have kind of have gone off and they're feeling a bit sorry for themselves, that is fairly normal for strawberries in the winter. So I'm hoping that these all come back lovely and strong in the summer you see there is some green shoots there underneath all of that straw so you put those back the straw just helps prevent them from being hit too harshly by the frost and hopefully that will make it a whole lot easier in the spring when they they come back out of the ground we have some more strawberries here so i did move some of them from the raspberry patch this is where they originally were so i moved some of them and left some of them because strawberries multiply. They, that's how they, they kind of make new shoots that go off and, and create new runners and then you get a new strawberry plant. And so I've, I've expanded my strawberries this year and in between them, we've got my garlic. Not a lot happening here yet, but garlic likes to be in the ground well before the shortest day. They used to say that you plant your garlic on the shortest day and then you harvest them on the longest day. I don't do that, but I do put them in. At least I did this year. <laughs> I put them in nice and early. My winter oats are doing really well. My cover crops for my winter oats. Looks like someone's been in there, maybe a cat, which is not so good. <laughs> the beans have kind of given up and gone because they don't like the cold one little bit. Luckily though, everything else is kind of drying off, including the giant puddle that, that I made with a digger that I told you about a couple of weeks ago. Chickens are doing great also. They need some fresh water today, so I'll be doing that after I've filmed. Yes, absolutely. And because it stopped raining, I've been able to open this up and they've got some lovely fresh air, which chickens, you know, Chickens like having fresh air, just like we humans do. I've already picked up the eggs today, so we don't have anything else going on in here. Um, but we do have some sad news. Um, tomorrow, Friday, so two days ago when you're watching this, we were supposed to have our electrician come and finish wiring up this system. So for those who don't know, who didn't watch last week's video, we have a spam panel here which we have on review. Uh, it's currently only got actually two functional circuits in. This one's not connected to anything right now, but it's just these two circuits that are connected up. And we're going to have that completed and then have the rest of the Ford home integration system put in so that when there was a power cut, this would automatically power this which would power most of the circuits in the house. And then we've got, an, that's effectively operating as a bit like an essential loads panel. And then in the main garage, we're gonna use the old breaker box for stuff that we can't easily back up. But unfortunately our electrician, we found out from the, the electrical company this morning, they rang us up and said they had um, hurt their back and they're not feeling very well. So they are taking some time off work and hopefully they will be back to full health soon. But it does mean, unfortunately, 
that for now, this is not going to have any progress made on it. If you haven't watched our Sunday Musing yet, uh, these are Velotrix electric bikes that, um, or rather Velotrix, Velotrix bike um, that we are going to be reviewing at some point on the channel. And also these great big things which have just arrived. These are the Nokian Hakapalita R5 SUV, big old winter tires, obviously, for a Dira Tal or F-150 Lightning. I was gonna go and get those put on today. I think I might be a bit late. Uh, it's, it's, getting, it's getting on, it's like 10 past four. So I think I probably am gonna miss the opportunity to get that one done. But it is very nice here now that all of the, all of the rain has stopped. We did need the rain, but it made everything super, super muddy and that wasn't necessarily a good thing. I'm gonna walk up here because I wanna show you something that has, I've not really talked a lot about on the channel, but it is something that I've been working on this year. And that is a little hedgerow right here. Now this hedgerow, some of, the, some of the plants have been knocked over by delivery vehicles. So this one's healthy, as you can see, the grass less so, this one's healthy. This one's healthy. There was one there that got knocked over by a delivery truck. This one is healthy. And this one has kind of uh, given up the ghost, unfortunately. So we'll have to see. I mean, it's still got some green right down at the bottom, as has this one, I think. So I'm hoping that we will see some coloration come back and we will see some fresh growth. And then we've got this one right at the far corner and you can see again people keep running over it with delivery trucks which is a terrible thing to happen because it means that at the end of the day um i i really want to have a hedge there and people unfortunately keep doing stupid things and driving vehicles over it it's mainly the delivery drivers the delivery drivers are very sweet and wonderful but at the same point they're not necessarily, they're not necessarily um, thinking about anything other than making it to their next delivery point when they actually stop and, uh, and deliver stuff. Let's wander over here and I'll show you some of the other stuff that's been going on. Obviously, my lilac is kind of giving up for the winter, but the potatoes, the potatoes are still growing. We've had a couple of frosts, well, one frost now, we'll have another one tonight. They're still growing, as are the lettuces. I'm just absolutely blown away. The parsnips have given up, which is fine. That's what I expected the parsnips to do. But the fact that the potatoes are still working on growing, they're still growing, it's just bonkers. Also, you'll notice the car behind me. That is our latest press car. It's not the one that I lost footage for, um, but it is on the way and hopefully it will uh, be a fun vehicle to, uh, to drive. Although it's going to be incredibly overpriced or rather unobtainable and not a vehicle that you would necessarily uh, be able to easily afford. I know I couldn't easily afford it. So um, on the deck, I also wanted to show you something that I haven't talked about before, and that is my Natatmo weather station. And the reason I bring it up is because I have a little uh, kind of thing with home automation, with home assistant. If the temperature outside is below three degrees Celsius, I have a little program that automatically turns on the defrost for both the F-150 Lightning and also our Chevrolet Bolt EV, so it's always properly defrosted in the morning if we need to go out or when we need to go out. I want to put in like a calendar event trigger as well, which I haven't got around to doing yet. That will obviously make it more efficient and make sure it doesn't defrost when it doesn't need to. But that is the end goal. So I know it's not necessarily a chicken and a garden uh, update, but it is using data from here to properly and accurately report how much weather we've got. So we've got our our anemometer there, we've got our rainfall indicator there. Obviously, we have had all the rain this year in the last week. That's what it's felt like. 
It's been super, super, super high amounts of rain, but now hopefully we're getting a few more crisp winter mornings. And it is my hope in the next couple of months that we can use better weather to do some winter winter groundwork. So one of the things we need to do is make sure this this garden down here is actually in good condition. The soil is terrible. Uh, the quality of the grass is really terrible. And we're still, I'm still working on my wife to try and convince her to let us have goats. Uh, that may or may not happen. Uh, but we do need to put a fence all the way down here because right now the chickens are in chicken jail, obviously because of bird flu, but obviously also because of the local coyote population who live in the valley. Uh, at the bottom of the garden and so we've lost so many chickens I'm just like yeah we're, we're keeping the chickens in one place instead so that is a bit of everything from the chicken and garden update with a little bit of EV stuff thrown in I hope that you enjoyed it and as always if you did like the video be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below in our or in our free to join discord chat room there are links in the video description and if you really like today's video why not leave us a super thanks it's easy to do and everything you do send our way goes towards helping us make great content if you haven't already please make sure you're subscribed to this channel and our main channel transport evolved and give that bell a gentle ding to be told when our next video goes live and obviously thanks on behalf of the entire crew go out to everyone who makes this channel possible that includes everyone who supports us on patreon and youtube as well as those of you who watch the videos and share them if you are a supporter at the charged up level you'll see your name on my right and if you just joined and your name's not there please don't worry it will be very soon thanks to our self-driving tier supporters mike weeder patrick boyarski chris maxwell there goes a the school bus brian newton michael goad bennett elder andrew martin pedro muir pinchero brophy wolf chris and michael johnson tazlet in the gong dan blair peter dillinger gordon c stephen o'donoghue carl hodgson anthony coates raging fellows denny hyde chris Center, and jim burness and of course super out of this world thanks to our starman level supporters they are andrew glenn anonymous freak jp fagerback joe bresney john lyons rory litwin kevin in Boroughbridge, Dave Kitchen, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and last but not least, Ian. If you would like to join that amazing list, it's really easy to do. Just head to the Patreon channel at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved, or rather the Patreon page for the channel, or you can support us by going to the main Transport Evolved YouTube channel and hitting the join button there. Or if you want, you can go and buy some swag from our swag store. You can send us Bitcoin or Kofi. I'm going to go inside and get warm because it's blinking cold. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and as always, keep evolving!